What's up guys? Haven't posted a video in a while because I've been working on the plasma table, like I said in my last video, but she's running. So uh, I got a lot of progress on the Porsche coming. Got a lot of parts coming. A little sneak peek right there. Um, so right now uh, I'm going to be working on the fuel cell, which I already cut, which is out of all these scraps of aluminum. Uh, that's 09, 090 aluminum. Uh, CNC cut a bunch of pieces and it's gonna go right, right in that area. Uh, and then I'm setting up the top for the 24 bolt, um, whatever fuel pickup. It's basically one of the standard sizes, uh, uh, but it's also the size of the radium ones. So if I can get radium to hook me up, then I'll be going with the radium. Otherwise I'll just make my own because the radium ones are really expensive. Definitely worth it. Shouts out radium. Your products are great, but out of my budget. So, so there's the, uh, there's the hole. I marked all the holes. Those are going to be, uh, drilled and tapped or drilled and, uh, Riv nutted or something along those lines. So we'll see, but first things first, we're gonna mock up the fuel cell, basically tack all the pieces together and see how well she fits. Uh, I know it's gonna need a little bit of trimming in a couple spots, but I think that's kind of cool. It'll like be super fitted around everything. So let's get to it. So as per usual, I forgot about you guys. Um, I started tacking it in place and then I ran out of welding gas and then I got new welding gas and then I just totally forgot and I just got to work but this is where we're at right now um, welded all of those guys that and now I'm building some filler panels for this uh, which I will show you it's, oops that's gone so yeah notched it there notched it there and same thing right here on that side, uh, just to clearance, make everything nice and tight fitting. Uh, rounded this edge just because I thought it would look cool, and uh, I think it does. Uh, these welds are going to get ground down, um, and if you're wondering why, I didn't put too much concern into these welds, and because I've been looking at Detroit Speeds, uh, they have like photo albums on their website, which you guys should definitely go look at. Detroit Speed is like the coolest shop ever. Uh, go on their website and look at, there's like a build folder and then there's got a Flickr account. And they have so many pictures of so much cool stuff and my mind just exploded. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm going for. It's just a, sort of a not custom built look, factory-ish looking, but obviously not factory. So I'll probably smooth these welds, anything that's visible, and then leave, you know, these, whatever's not totally visible just for extra strength. Um, but yeah, so now I'm going to weld this guy in place and then work on a plate for this. And I will show you what it's looking like in the car. So I started uh, grinding, grinding and sanding down the weld edge. Um, and I came to the conclusion that I'm just going to leave the rear uh, squared off and just have the rounded front. Uh, I think it looks fine. The Around the edge, I'm going to make a little border that will bolt the fuel cell to here. Um, and then... I had the fuel cell sitting on a jack, but since the bottom of it's really small, I was using that to like weight it down and then it just got grumpy. Anyways, uh, I'm going to mount it maybe somewhere down there. I did order the stuff today to fix that giant rust hole on my rust-free car. Did I just dent? I think I just dented that. That sucks. Oh, well. Uh, that's going to get covered. There's going to be a little sheet there. And then it's going to come. I'm also going to make a sheet that goes down so that we're not using the fuel cell as a uh, shroud, I guess, radiator shroud. Um, I don't want to use the 
fuel cell because that'll get the fuel hot and that's not good. So that, and then I'm also planning on, uh, you know, most of it's gonna be ducted out the bottom through the spare tire well, but I'm also gonna duct some of it out towards the brakes. Uh, it will be warm air coming towards the brakes, but it is better than nothing. And also, if you know about the Ford GTs back in the day, shouts out you, you're the shit. Uh, if you don't, back in the day, the original Ford GT, the GT40, I think it is, uh, the air coming to the front brakes was so cold that at a certain corner somewhere, I might not be exactly correct, the cold air was actually cracking the brake rotors. So he, they actually, whoever, maybe Carol Shelby, I don't know, uh, ducted the air from behind the radiator to the front brakes so that it wasn't freezing cold air, it was slightly warm air, and the brakes were good. So that's what we're doing, even though I'm not gonna crack the front brakes because I'm not that fancy. Got a couple goodies in the mail, uh, some of which is this MP axle kit. Cool stuff. Some uh, SR20 injectors. Um, they'll fit right into the factory fuel rail and these are 370cc versus the factory 270cc. Uh, the only reason I'm actually doing that is because the connectors I bought don't fit these injectors, but I know they fit 240 or SR injectors. So simple fix. And then got this guy, which is the uh, remote thermostat housing. I think it takes a Chevy like whatever standard thermostat. Uh, I'm gonna weld dash 20s just like that to each end. And then probably gonna build a nifty little mount right there somewhere, somewhere tucked in. Um, and then this port will go to probably maybe that little flat spot right there, uh, which will basically bypass. I don't really know if it goes like this or like this. But either way, it'll bypass, uh, it'll bypass the thermostat, at which will bypass the radiator, I guess, and then it'll just send the coolant back over and through the engine, keep the engine coolant flowing so we don't have any hot spots, don't have any uh, Subaru blown head gaskets. But then I got some seat rails because I gave mine to Corey. So he bought me some new ones, but let's assemble these guys. Got chromoly axle shafts, new bolts, which is nice. New boots, some grease, and a couple of CV joints. Hopefully there's four of them. I don't know if they're. I don't know if they're different ones. Four six nine B. Four six nine B. All right, so they're all the same inside and out. So the boots are all probably the same. And this is my first time assembling axles from scratch, so I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna wing it. Got the boot slipped over. Uh, this was a little tight, but I guess that's a good thing. And then got the boot slipped over this guy. And currently I'm reading the instructions to see if this line goes like that or like that. Here they are all together. These went together surprisingly easy uh, for being my first time. Uh, figured out the groove goes on the outside along with the flat part of the inner, I don't know the names of the parts. Um, but yeah. Didn't put any grease in them because I don't know if they're going to have to come apart again, if I'm going to have to modify them. Uh, I test fit the axle shaft and it fit nicely in there. Um, and if you happen to be doing a WRX Trans in a Porsche, um, these are 18 and three quarter. Let's see. There's the part number right there. And, uh, yeah, I think 
I think these will hold the small amount of power that this car will have, and then uh, when I go more power, maybe I'll break something and have to fix it, because that's how it goes. Uh, I'm not going to throw these in right now, because there is still this part still on the car on this side. Maybe on this, no, I pulled this one off. But yeah, this side still has part of the CV thing on it. So I gotta pull that off and maybe jack up the car and move the suspension around. So these will go on eventually. Another thing, I bought this nifty tube straightener. Uh, this is eBay, it looks just like the Earl's, I think it is, or Russell, I don't know. One of the name brands, but it's like identical to it. Um, there's like a hundred something bucks on eBay and it works pretty well. This is a three eighths stainless tubing. Uh, don't know what wall thickness, but you know, about that thick. Uh, I'm gonna use this for the fuel lines on the car because I don't know how rusty those are and you know, they're not shiny stainless steel. So I'll be bending those. One of the next videos on that fella right there. And the last thing, I began uh, the engine wiring harness. This is the MS3 stuff. These are all the wires that I'm going to use. These are all the wires that I'm mostly not going to use, except need some power, ground. But these are all engine functions going to the engine. Um, so basically, if I want to un, if I want to drop the engine, all I got to do is twist this. Twist. I'll probably do another mil spec for the power connectors going to the injectors, coil packs, all that stuff. But yeah, that's all that stuff. Looks fancy. I'm gonna put some DR25 over it to make it look super hot boy. And that'll be visible under the center console area. So that's all for now. Uh, I'm gonna get to work on this right here, which is uh, the LS powered Ford Ranger four wheel drive. Uh, there's one other guy on YouTube that I've seen doing this, but we got the engine in there. Uh, it's a 5.3 to a 4L60, four-wheel drive, all standard, you know, with basically living at stock, except a big old uh, BTR stage four truck cam and little minor upgrades for now until the owner turbos it later. But subscribe so you can watch us build this thing and it'll be fun.